Hello, everyone. Uh, I guess we are about to start, as it's already 15. So, yeah. Uh, today's topic is how can QA and uh, developer teams work together and uh, how they can improve uh, the automation test coverage and overall the whole experience in uh, a project. So, uh, I will go quickly go through the agenda. Of course, I will do a brief uh, introduction of myself. Uh, then we are going to establish a baseline and actually uh, deep, uh, talk more about uh, what are the requisites of uh, having a good uh, QA and uh, development team relationship. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, a bit for uh, planning action and uh, delivery of our uh, automation tests. And of course, uh, as I work every time to show some examples, I will give you some of the f problems that we faced and how we actually solved them together. And last uh, but not least, we'll have a QA session. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, starting with the introduction, my name is Tony and uh, yeah, uh, I'm a senior QA automation lead at uh, FFW. Uh, this is uh, me in an uh, office uh, situation and uh, this is again me keeping my cool when things go sideways. <laughs> because I think it's important for everyone to stay calm when, uh, no matter what happens and uh, in order to act as the best of our abilities. Because when people start to get nervous, get uh, over excited in a bad way, they start to think sideways and we are not delivering the best. So, and our clients of course get disappointed. So, uh, a little bit about uh, the company I work in. Uh, it's called FFW. We have uh, over 800 uh, employees almost all over the world. And I'm from uh, Bulgaria. And uh, yeah, my, I've been in the company for uh, 10 years now. I actually turned 10 years on 1st of October. And basically, this is my first IT job. So my whole career is based in one company, which for some people might, uh, yeah, might be a minus because you have to go around, see how other people are doing some stuff. But uh, I believe that this helped me uh, prepare and uh, be uh, with a good connection with the people I work with. We've become not only colleagues, but friends. So I believe this is one of the key points to have uh, good results. So uh, let's move on uh, about uh, what we need to establish first uh, when we gather a new team and or we start as the same team on a new project. Uh, so first of all, having uh, people with the right mindset, I believe is the key. Everyone should have the same focus and the same goals. And it's really important on both QA and Dev side uh, to have everyone on the same page. What we are doing, what we are going to deliver, uh, what is Quant's uh, main goal, and uh, what if the project that we are working on, on the product we are building, if it's aimed at uh, end users, we need to uh, understand how the end users are going to use it. Because uh, actually we discussed this uh, earlier uh, during the coffee breaks with some colleagues that uh, not always the developers uh, understand how uh, and why we are building what we are building. Actually, we discussed with uh, Dimitar here that uh, there are two types of people. Uh, one of them are strictly following instructions and uh, yeah, don't think about how actually end users are going to use it. And it's important to think about uh, the thing that we are doing. It's important to uh, put ourselves in the perspective of the end user and actually what we are doing, is it usable? Is it really practical? Uh, or uh, we are just focused on doing our job and getting things done. Uh, so why we need to have uh, QA and Dev teams united is uh, for me the most beneficial thing is that we can face uh, the clients and uh, yeah, defend ourselves when we need to do something. For example, spend some time on developing uh, 
QA tests, automation tests, uh, introducing new tools, etc. Uh, in order to yeah, be more convincing in front of the client, we need uh, to be united. And to be united, we need to uh, have the proper mindset. So, uh, in order to bring the developers uh, on our side as a Mac QA, uh, we need for me to uh, let them know how actually the tests works. Uh, no matter what framework we choose to use, uh, I think we need to spend the time to show them how it works and best case scenario to have them uh, set up the framework that we have locally. So uh, just to give an overview of the audience here, how many of you are developers? So <laughs> most of you, I guess, <laughs> are developers and uh, I guess you are interested in, uh, yeah, uh, how to achieve things uh, more. So, uh, why? This is the question. Uh, because uh, a couple of years ago, in my experience, uh, develop developers, most of them didn't uh, actually understand why we have the test, why we have automation frameworks, etc. And uh, I believe that by spending the time under uh, showing them what exactly is the purpose, and how actually the tests are helping us in the long term by spending a couple of uh, hours, a couple of sessions together to show you, I mean, to show you from QA side to show the developers what we are doing. Uh, of course, they will, uh, developers will be a bit more interested in this topic because it's kind of technical. It's uh, not so, uh, uh, for example, some uh, Scrum stuff or some Agile stuff that are purely theoretical and uh, by showing them how uh, and why uh, they will start more to think about the work that they deliver, how they can help us uh, QAs deliver it uh, better. So uh, one thing I mentioned and it's in here on the slide, uh, it's best if uh, developers have their uh, uh, have the automation tool of the team set up locally so they when developing uh, new features for example or a prior uh, major change to do a local run and uh, see if we are there they are not going to push something that will break for example the whole development environment of course it's not always the case it's not always possible but this is the goal that we need to aim uh, so about uh, planning and good results. Uh, good planning means good results, of course, but uh, what actually is good planning? Uh, first of all, we are, I guess, we mo most of us work uh, with stories, and when we are on a planning session and we start discussing specific story, first thing from QA side, uh, I believe is to discuss with the, develop with the developers if a story is automatable. I don't know if this is a real world, but, uh, word, but uh, let's use it. So uh, we should aim, of course, to automate all the things, but of course it's not possible. So it's uh, really important to uh, decide and scale, is it worth it? Because let's say we are developing a certain functionality, uh, we will spend a a lot of time automating it, but at the end of the day, is it going to be really the most crucial functionality that we are doing, or there are more important stuff like, uh, example, for example, imagine you have a social network and you have a registration page, of course, this is your most important thing on the site to work, but of, and then you have a uh, blog pages and some search, which is more important. Here, you need to uh, think like the end user. Is it more important from the end user to, for the registration to work or to have uh, the search of the blog pages? Because on social networks, not many users read blog pages. And uh, this way, you need to structure uh, the most important things, start covering them, and uh, go down to the less important stuff. Uh, one more thing that uh, is also important during these planning sessions is to uh, estimate both the manual and QA work. As you may know, uh, uh, QAs are uh, working. There's two main uh, 
differences between QAs, uh, manual and automation QAs, and it's important to uh, estimate both of the work because sometimes it may happen that the manual work is uh, much less than the automation work or vice versa. And uh, one more extra step is uh, to have a split between uh, the uh, QA members of the automation and the manual work. What I mean is that uh, of course, if you have more QA members, sometimes you have only one, but uh, if you have two or more, uh, I think it's important to one of them to do the manual work and the other one to do the automation work because this way you are doing a cross check and everyone can make a mistake, everyone can miss something. And when you have two people different working on the same thing, uh, you will of course catch something that the other guy missed. And I've seen a lot of examples of uh, bugs that are not reproducible manually, but the automation tools, as you know, they behave quite different. Uh, they catch some issues. And uh, yeah, when you discuss on this planning for a story that needs to be automated, but let's say you are pressured by the time and you can do it within the current story scope, if, of course, you can go ahead and move it away as a work and have a separate uh, backlog of issues to handle in terms of automation work. And uh, what I believe is the right way to go is to always uh, bring some of this work into your sprint or whatever uh, time frame you have defined to work with. But always, always, uh, take some of this work because this way you are going to constantly improve your coverage. You are constantly going to uh, deliver better product for the clients. And uh, it, this, is, this point is not only related to QA and devs, uh, it's related to all the team members. They all need to push uh, with suggestions. Yeah, Siri activated. <laughs> and. Uh, it's important everyone to be aware of how actually the automation tool works and what can be done in a specific uh, example. So uh, in our case, in my experience, we even had uh, the clients understand how the automation tool work and they are giving us suggestions. Uh, do you think this is a good uh, item to be automated? or something like this. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm ahead of time, but uh, as I said, I really like to talk with examples. So I will just give you a couple of uh, real case issues that we faced and how we solved them uh, with the help of developers. Of course, I'm very grateful to all my colleagues that uh, spend the time to give us solutions because yeah, uh, not all QA guys are so technical. Of course, developers are working all day with uh, technical stuff and they have a better understanding. So one thing we introduced uh, uh, during last couple of years is uh, having all our uh, tests running nightly. So at each morning we have a overview, a report of uh, what's working and what's not. And I believe that uh, this helps us keep the even the dev environment stable enough. Of course, uh, there are always red flags every morning, but uh, it's uh, easier for the QA team to have an overview, uh, send the proper feedback to the developers and get uh, things solved as soon as possible. Uh, one other thing is, uh, after, uh, as you know, uh, when you delete a user in Drupal, uh, some content is deleted and some is not. And when we are running our automate, automation tests, we tend to leave no trace behind, meaning that every content created by the users that the automation test uses needs to be gone. So we faced a problem where uh, you delete a user, but of course there are items like uh, terms and uh, menu items that leave behind. This uh, made us do a custom QA delete module that was of course developed by uh, our dev team. Uh, but this module uh, tracks all the entities that are created in the Drupal uh, by the 
by every user. And then when deleting, we added actually an extra uh, yeah, option for canceling user, uh, which says delete FFW QA delete content and uh, user. And this, what this model is doing is actually deleting everything, not only the nodes, but uh, all the entities that are created this way. Uh, after the test run is finished, there are no test items, no dummy content, no, and nothing is left. Uh, of course, this was done with the purpose of keeping our uh, development environments clean, not having so much uh, dummy content, and uh, this will also prevent uh, doing mistakes if we decide to run the tests on production because we don't want to have any test content live. Uh, one more thing, uh, as you know, uh, Drupal has weird uh, ways of naming uh, fields, etc. really, really long uh, selectors. Uh, and uh, as you know, IDs are the best uh, way to, and the fastest way to select an item. Uh, in terms of automation tools. So whenever and needed, we asked our current developers to add some custom IDs so we can uh, use them instead of the long Drupal selectors. Of course, there are cases where you can still use the ones provided, but you can have a case where uh, you don't. Uh, one more thing that we faced as an issue was recapture. Of course, it's created uh, to avoid bots. And when running uh, automation tool, uh, it's actually controlled by uh, external, uh, no matter if it's a Selenium or any other driver. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's hard to bypass CAPTCHA as its purpose. What we did is uh, to create a custom endpoint uh, where uh, when you hit it, it sets a cookie and in our dev environments, when you have this special cookie which is randomly generated in each run, uh, the environment knows to bypass the recapture and uh, move forward. This way we can submit forms uh, that have recapture and uh, other, uh, and uh, use it on other uh, places where it's used. Uh, so, and uh, one of the other thing we uh, implemented and faced as an issue was working with uh, dynamic data. Uh, if, uh, imagine that you have an eBay uh, search listing and uh, constantly uh, the items that are listed there are changing and they are coming from an outside source a feed or something like this. You're just consuming the list of items. Uh, so each day you don't know what is going to be there. How we solve this is we created our internal API, which the automation tool calls, stores the data, and then runs the automation tool and starts behaving like a an user. And in, it knows to expect certain items with certain titles so it, it can search for them and expect them as a result. Because, and also you can have some properties like uh, in this example, color, series, etc. And uh, this is also very usable in live productions sites when we use, uh, when we run our smoke tests after each deploy, uh, we use this API to gather the data because we of course cannot create <laughs> dummy data on live. And we tend to not do it on our dev production because we have external feed in our case. And I think this is a really good solution for uh, dynamic content. So uh, thank you very much. And is there one question? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, applause, please. Yes. <laughs> From you? Yeah, no, no. The question ah. is not from me. The question is from uh, Esam. Uh, how can you unite the tools to use for both sides, developers and QAs, when they are different for devs? Uh, all tools or the automation tools? Esam? <laughs> yeah? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Maybe you can.
How can you unite them? So you're saying that you don't want to have an extra tool in your setup? Yeah. Uh, well, how can you unite them? I know maybe you can work together. Currently, uh, in my case, in my experience, we just have it set up ex extra. Because the developers usually you maybe use Docker or something else and everything is there already. And maybe you can work together to introduce the automation tool of the QAs also in the Docker and have it there in place and have it installed already when you uh, spin up a new container. Yeah, and maybe just to add something for me because I have been a developer and he has been my QA. I know very well that you know uh, when we choose tools, we try to choose tools which are uh, you know with the same background. Like uh, we use Bihat. Bihat is using PHP, right? And uh, Drupal is using PHP. So yeah. we very often have our developers able to use uh, 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 to write uh, Bihat test. And uh, now with uh, the JavaScript frameworks, it is it is the same. So uh, at the end of the day, we speak the same or write the same language. You know. So, no other yeah. questions here. Any other questions in the room? No? Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah? Thank you. Thank you.